The exploration of space has been hazardous adventure. A new line of space toys drew impressive crowds of children of all ages. Okay, Houston, we've had a problem here. Sometimes, they sneak up on you. But most of the time, a bright white light appears and they sort of melt out of it. They always come in threes. Never twos, never fours. And under no condition do they ever come alone. They come for you when you're young. Before you've developed. Before you've seen what they've seen. Before you know what they know. And then they show you exactly how they feel. Always remember. If you want to survive, never Never look them in the eye. Never look them in the eye. That's why I wear these. Where are my glasses? Where are my glasses? I need my glasses! Simon. Where are my glasses? Simon. I need my glasses! glasses. We booked you in. Where are my glasses? I need my You do remember being glasses. booked in, don't you, Simon? Of course I remember being booked. But if you took my glasses, maybe you're one of them. How many other people are in this room? You tell me. There's two. Myself and my sergeant. I thought you said they never come in twos. You never know where the third one might be hiding. You can trust me, Simon. Let me see your nipple. What? Your nipple. Let me see it. Just tell me about the tower, Simon. Little Simon tumbling down. This is ridiculous. Tumbling down. Simon, Simon. tumbling, tumbling. Simon. Falls to the ground. Hits his head. Has a frown. Falls Fine. to Simon. the ground. You want the nipple, Simon? Little you want to see the nipple? Fine, Simon. Simon. Here. Is that, is that what's going to make you happy, Simon? Simon. Well, tell me about the tower. The left one, the right one. This is all you're going to see. Little Simon. What? Simon, right nipple. They have mind control. And if you ever look them in the eye, well, let's just say I don't want to be anywhere near you. That's why I wear my glasses. 
the, the powers don't work through the shading and obscures the light prisms, and it diffracts their telepathic abilities into the atmosphere around us. Is that why you're up on the radio tower? Because they were controlling you. It was breaking their line of communication. That's how they communicate, through our radio towers at ultra-high frequencies. It's kind of like dog whistles. You blow those things and they go crazy. If they can hear a dog whistle, what do they need with our radio towers? You can't hear a dog whistle from Earth on the moon. The moon? You do know where the moon is, don't you, Daryl? Yes, I know where the moon is. Now, why are they on the moon? Because they're moonies! That's where they live! That's where the invasion is coming from. The invasion that's gonna wipe out the human race. Only those in Poco Rio. Poco Rio? You have heard of Poco Rio, Texas, haven't you, Daryl? Yes, Simon, I've heard of Poco Rio, Texas. I used to live there. Then I'd call anyone that you might know and tell them to hightail it out of there because there is no stopping them with me in here and not out there! Why do they only want Poco Rio? I don't know. Do I look like a Morgon to you? A Morgon? Morgon. Mooney. Same thing, Daryl. He's got no ID, no record of his prints, nothing. He says his name's Simon Applewhite. Here's a transcript of his interrogation. Now, I've convinced Judge Harris to slap him with an emergency mental illness warrant. I want him out of here before he starts humping the electrical sockets. You get to drive him to the mental ward in Madison. Now, he's not under arrest. He's under police supervision. Now, I don't want you beating him with your baton or anything. This guy is a social case. And if you want to keep your job, you get to be a social worker. Since when did we become a taxi service for the psych ward? I'm giving you a job that won't get you fired and won't make me look bad. Do not screw it up. I know it's 50 miles out of my way. Thanks. I'll be home by 10. Yes, I'll buckle up. Look. Well, then just tell her I'll help her with her homework in the morning. Christine, calm. I want you to lie down and think about a happy place, okay? Yes, Peru's fine. No, I don't think the mosquitoes will bother there. Look, I've got to go, all right? Bye. All right, one broken watch, no band. One broken cigarette lighter, no cigarettes. One bottle opener. One pair of sunglasses. You know, it's actually not a pair. Excuse me? The sunglasses. There's only one of them, so it can't be a pair. In fact, it should just be a sunglass. Excuse me, Peter. Oh, right. I was, uh, I was just going to my desk. <clears throat> it's good, 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 good. Uh, glad things are working out for you. You know, uh, I could come by sometime this week, you know? Maybe help fix your fence or something? Just... Uh, that's, that's sweet, but I'm really busy. Okay. Okay. Yeah, behind me. Oh, then, uh, maybe, uh, next week we... Peter, I stopped you from choking on a chicken nugget, all right? Now, I, I appreciate your sincere gratitude, but it was just a nugget. Have you ever seen an eyeglass? What? A monocle. One of those lenses distinguished old British men hold to their eyes in the movies. That's an eyeglass. This is a sunglass. If there was one lens instead of two, then it would be a sunglass. No. This is a sunglass! Mr. Applewhite, you're a free man. Don't make me arrest you again. Simon, I'm Detective John Lesberg. Is he trying to touch me with his other hand? What? 
Is he trying to touch my genitals with his other hand? John, get this pervert out of here. Groping other people's genitals may be routine for you, but I find it rather offensive. Like I was saying, I'm Detective John Lefsberg, and you're Simon Applewhite, right? If you already know my name, why say it as if you were asking Mr. Rubbum if you got him? I was just trying to be polite. Polite! I don't know what pack of wolves raised you, but where I come from, we don't shake hands with Mr. Peacock to say hello! I wasn't raised by wolves. You weren't? No. Gorillas? No. Reindeer? Dolphins? Ants? Parakeets? Hyenas? Humans. Oh. Where are we going? To a hotel. Where's your car? Right there. Why don't you drive a cop car? Because I'm a detective, and detectives don't drive cop cars. Now, come on. Why don't you drive a Ferrari like Magnum P.I.? Because I don't live in Hawaii. You live near the Gulf. That's tropical enough. Yeah, well, I don't make as much money as Magnum P.I., and besides, he's not a detective. He's a private investigator. No, he's not. He's a detective. That well, hurts. What do you think the P.I. stands for? Well, I don't know the man personally. It stands for private investigator. That's what P.I. means. Are you sure? I'm positive. Now, get in the car. Ow. Do you have airbags? Nope. Have you ever met him? Met who? Magnum P.I. Who have we been talking about? He's a TV character. You can't meet him. Well, if you never met him, how do you know what the P.I. stands for? Because they said on the show that he was a private investigator. But do they say what the P.I. stands for? I don't know, Simon. It's been years since I've even seen that show. Then how do you have any authority on the subject at all, John? Fine. Fine, Simon. He's a, he's a detective that lives in Hawaii, where detectives make a lot more money than they do in Texas, all right? A and the P.I. stands for, uh, Pennington... Pennington Albella hit? Really? Yeah. Are you sure? Yeah. What nationality is that? Indian. How do you know? Because I speak Hindi. All right? All right. Yes, if I had that last name, I would go by the initials, too. What? Magnum, Pennington, Albilahit. I'm surprised you didn't even get a job with a name like that. Can I see your nipple now? No. Uh, I mean, are you completely delusional? <laughs> Do you hear a little voice inside your head that screams out nipples and genitals? No. You know, I would just feel a little safer knowing that trapped inside a steel cage barreling across Texas at 70 miles per hour with a Morgan. Hey, 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 I am not a Morgan, hey, all right? Hey, 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 I don't know that. I'm not a Morgan because there are no such things as aliens. Well, then, obviously, you've never seen a Morgan, John. If I've never seen one, then how could I be one? Huh? How about that? Hey, whoa, get back in the car. Show me your nipple. I'm not showing you my nipple. I'm a little teapot. I'm a little teapot. I'm a little teapot. You know the Short words. and stout. Here is my handle and here is my spout. Uh, when I get shook, Simon, up, hear me get shout. Get off the pump, I'm Simon. A little teapot. Everybody, show me your nipple. Show me your nipple. Simon. Show me your nipple. Please show him Everybody. your goddamn nipple. Show me your nipple. Show me your nipple. Okay, show fine. I'll show you my nipple. Right nipple, John. You see, the Morgans, they're aliens, so to blend in on the Earth, they have to make human suits. And they use flesh and blood and the whole bit, and you'd be completely fooled if you ever saw one.
Unless I look, looked at their nipple. Mm. The right nipple, that's the clincher. Oh. Their technology's advanced, but it isn't perfect. The suit seals up around the right nipple, leaving, leaving this red, blue discoloration, and it's ugh, rather disgusting, but they have to have it to breathe. <laughs> to breathe? Well, everyone's head isn't where yours and mine is, John. Oh, okay. That area is perforated and it lets in oxygen. Okay, well, if they breathe oxygen, then how can they live on the moon? There's plenty of oxygen beneath the surface. Everybody knows that. H how come I don't know that? You're s***. Oh. Well, let me ask you this. How do you know so much about these, uh, these Morgons? Because I've been abducted by them. Two or three times, but the last time was the worst. Why's that? I don't want to talk about it. Talking about everything else. Doesn't mean I have to keep talking, John. Well, no one else is gonna listen to you. Magnum Pennington Albilla hit. And I thought John Leafsburg was bad. Leafsburg. Must be a detective thing. That's fine. I'm done talking. And you're still crazy. It is to get eight tracks these days. God. Why are you taking me to a hotel in a different city, John? You know, I'm beginning to wonder that myself. I didn't mean to break it. You didn't mean to break it? You, you took it out of the stereo, you pulled out all the tape, and then you slammed it on my dash. You, you didn't mean to, though. Whoa, 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 what are you doing? Get, I'm looking for another get tape. Get back in the front seat, Simon. You're gonna make me wreck. Then keep your hands on the wheel. Damn it, Simon! <laughs> Ow! <sighs> Stay in the car. Should have kept your hands on the wheel. Flat. You're gonna change a tire with me in the car? Not safe. Don't want to hear it. Get back in the car. What the hell are you doing? God! Why did you do that? I don't like keys, John. You can't just throw away things you don't like, Simon. I don't like keys! Why? Why? They were in the ignition the whole time. You didn't say a word. Now, how are we gonna get anywhere without any keys? We could walk. <laughs> walk? Like 30 miles from either town, Simon. You can walk 30 miles? We could, um... Just sit there and occupy yourself quietly. That's boring. We'll count some rocks or build a log cabin. Just don't bother me. One. Two. Forty-six, forty thousand five hundred forty-seven, forty thousand five hundred forty-eight, 
You know that you haven't even thrown a thousand? You know that? One million seven hundred fourteen thousand two hundred thirty one. Simon, please go away. Please go throw your rocks someplace else. Further on down the road, please. Fine, John. One million seven hundred fourteen thousand two hundred thirty two. One million seven hundred fourteen thousand two hundred and forty one, one million seven hundred fourteen thousand two hundred and forty two, one million seven hundred thousand four hundred and and Are you two okay? I didn't even see you! I was standing in the middle of the road. You should thank your friend. He saved your life. Now we're even. What? For that hand grenade in Nam? You two were in Vietnam together? Sure, I saved his life. The ungrateful bastard never did have the decency to thank me. Mary. Mm. Charmed. That's nice. Look. I know this sounds crazy, but somehow I've lost my keys. My car's broken down, and we're kind of stranded. Can I give you a ride or something? I feel horrible. We need to go to Giddings. I thought we were going to a hotel in Madison. Well, maybe we could if I had my keys. I'm going to Poco Rio, and Giddings is right on the way. Great. We'd be honored. Hop in. Why are you wearing sunglasses? Lights from oncoming cars give me headaches. <laughs> What? She's a Mooney. You saw how she tried to kill me. You're standing in the middle of Pitch Black Road. She asked about my sunglass. It's nighttime, Simon. And you heard where she was headed. Do you know how many people drive to Poco Rio? <sighs> Did you see how willing she was to give us a ride, John? Maybe she's trying to help us because she almost killed you. I bet she's taking us to the mothership. <laughs> mm -hmm. Whoa, 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 whoa. What are you doing? Getting in the car. No, I'm not letting some psychopath ride in the front seat with a girl that's trying to help us. Listen, genital cover! I was sucking up to her so I could see her nipple. How can I do that if I'm in the... Get in the seat. If she's a Morgan, we're gonna have to kill her. And I don't think you have what it takes to do that. Keep your voice down. She is gonna hear you. You're right, John. Let's hurry and take a ride with the nice, pretty little lady. Bye. There are no such things as aliens, all right? There's a very potential one sitting in the car right now. Get in the back seat! You! I'm the one with the gun! Oh. oh, good job, John. Let the Morgan go! Morgans and Moody's!
Thanks for letting us both sit up front. We get motion sickness bad. Not a problem, man. He's not a Morgon. What was that? I told my friend that you're not a Morgon. A what? An alien. Cool. <laughs> yeah, cool. My friend doesn't think so. That's because he's uncool. Yeah, he's uncool. We need to get you some shades, man. All yeah, right, man. Gotta have shades, man. <laughs> Gotta have shades. Gotta be cool. Gotta be cool. That's right. It's me, Lost for Keys. I'm sorry, it was a long story. Simon, just wait here, I'll get you a pillow and some sheets. Do you have down? No. Come on, Christine. Come on. Come on. Simon, this is my wife, Christine. Christine Simon. Hello. Simon. Whoa, whoa, whoa. Not just, good. Not good. Just try not to touch anything, Simon. He dropped my books. I'll pick up the books. But they can hurt their spines on the ground it's okay. like that. They look better there anyway. I'll just wait here. I was so scared, John. I didn't know where you were. Well, I'm sorry. The car got a flat halfway to Madison, so... Please tell me you buckled up. Mm -hmm. Always buckle. Always buckle. Well, I didn't mean to leave you alone so long. Well, at least I had Samantha's friends here to talk to. But then they all got tired and I had to put them to bed. Little Samantha kept asking me all night, Where's Daddy? I have homework. Homework, John! I can't help her with her homework, and you are nowhere to be found. Christine, we've talked Don't about... Don't touch them! God damn it, why did you do that? God! Do you want to go back to the hospital? <laughs> I'm sorry. But they were resting exactly where they should be resting, and they shouldn't be moved when they're resting. Have you taken your medicine today, Christine? No, I haven't. I was so busy. Samantha couldn't sleep because you weren't here to kiss her goodnight. And then the sheep woke up, John, and you know them. They're always cranky when they wake up. Christine, and we have talked Your about this. Your shoes are so filthy, John. Do not push me, Christine. <laughs> Do you still love me? Of course, I still love you, Christine, but I love you more when you take your medicine, so please... Promise you won't leave me. Please go take your medicine. Go make Sam's bed, and you will feel better, all right? Okay. Okay, I'll be good. I'll be good. I'm sorry I had to bring that guy home with me. I apologize. That's all right. It's just I didn't have a choice. If Hayes found out that I screwed up, he'd probably fire me again, so... That's the guy from jail? Yes. John, how could you... Where are you going? To get my baby. She's not sleeping by herself with some psychopath in the house.
Have you ever wondered why the dark side of the moon never ever faces the Earth? I have pondered that from time to time. Mooniopolis, the Mooney City. The city on the moon. That's the rub. It's their mega metropolis they've built on the dark side. It's covered by a, a huge dome, so it can contain oxygen they harvest from underground. It's so big that if the dark side of the moon was to ever face the Earth, it would look larger than the Sea of Tranquility. But with their machines, they calibrated the spin of the moon to be exactly that of the Earth's, just so we can't see it. <laughs> the gall of those aliens. And then there's the sky. A big, beautiful, wide open sky. Not as beautiful as you think. Morgons use the moon's gravity to create atmospheric pressure discrepancies in order to hide Earth entries from land based radar. In fact, hot air balloon pilots are the only reliable humans on Earth. Think about it. There's really no more use for them with airplanes, helicopters, and zeppelins. But they keep ballooning for one reason. They're hunting aliens. Well, isn't that a dandy? Like a flower. What is this? This is nothing. Good morning, Juju Bear. Good morning, Christine. Why are you dressed like Little Bo Peep? And why do you not have any pants on? I'm dirty. Want some eggs? They're yellow. And soon I'll be clean. I don't have time for this. You never have time, John. Now, Simon. Now, what was that? That was everything. Have you been talking to him about us? Of course not, John. You always have time for me. Why, you're a regular chatterbox. I take it you've taken your medicine today. Double the dosage to make it for yesterday. <coughs> These eggs are terrible. Have you talked to John about his genital fixation? Why, no, I haven't. And don't listen to him, Christine. He's so crazy, he's completely forgotten his own paranoia. Hey, Simon, wear your sunglasses. How do you know Christine's not a Morgon? Oh, my God. Look, I've got to go. I've got to go get my car. Can you two take care of each other until I get back, please? Remember to be home in time to take Sam to school. She was late yesterday. God damn it, Christine. Our daughter is deaf. Why don't you understand that? You know, on second thought, you just keep pretending that she's alive because that's the only way you're ever going to see her again. Would you like some more eggs? No. Back. That's the new one from Gods on Holiday. See what wonders. Up next, uh, well, evidently we have a guest today. Hi. Nice goggles. It's a sunglass! <laughs> Damn it! 
Christine, how could you let him go? I understand that you love everyone today, but... You... No, Christine, no. We, we can't talk to her anymore. You can't... You, you can't keep pretending like this, Christine. It's not healthy. Okay? No, I've got to go. I, I've got to go. Okay. Okay, put her on the phone. Hi, Sam. How's my little girl? I love you. I swear to God, we were on our way to Madison. For 30 minutes, he forced a DJ to broadcast him blowing dog whistles to disrupt alien communications to the moon. I understand you're upset. Upset? How long do you think I'll be able to hold on to a detective that lets a crazy man spend the night in his house? I talked to Christine. Do not listen to her. She is out of her mind. If administration found out what you did, I could kiss my promotion goodbye. This is your last chance, all right? Push me, push me, push me. Where's my sunglasses? I wore my sunglasses, damn it! Come on! No guns, no badge, no cuffs. Just serve a mental illness warrant. We'll all pretend that Simon Applewhite was in a psych ward in Madison yesterday. Well, aren't you a cute trio? Man, I want my sunglasses! Look, why don't you get somebody else to do it? Because I still have faith in you. Now, don't let me down. in clinical psychology, I was thinking, if you don't need help with your fence, maybe I could come by sometime and try to help her. Bring it, Rudy! Bring it, all three! Come on! That's all right. Okay. Well, I guess I'll bring by some literature on the subject then. Better yet, you know what? I'll tell you what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna recommend a good psychologist buddy of hey, mine. Peter, we're square, all right? All right, clear! that you think that you owe me something, but you don't. You know, John, where I come from, saving someone's life is worth a bronze statue in Central Park. I'll give you more gun, you son of a bitch! Why don't you go back to wherever it is that you are from and erect one for me, all right? Just don't bother me about it. And don't eat any more chicken nuggets. How about that? John. Our species what? Does this look like the nipple of an alien? Does it? I think not. Oh, they always come in threes, John. Shut up. They always come in threes. Shut up. Oh.
I want you to listen very carefully. Frank Cohen is a Morgan ambassador from the moon. Simon. You got some serious issues. And uh, I'm not gonna go through all this again. So you've got to cooperate with me. Okay? I'm in love with your wife, John. She's so beautiful. Ah! She makes horrible eggs, but she's so beautiful. I'm gonna get you some professional help, okay? You don't need to be in here. You need to be with someone who knows how to help someone like you go on with their life. Is it hard to love a corpse, John? What? Your dead daughter. I want to know so I can help the parents of the children Frank Cohen slits open. Frank Cohen is a respected businessman. He's a Morgan in a human suit! Prepping the Earth for a hostile alien takeover! Does that sound respectable to you, John? Do you want your dead daughter to be slit open and used as a, hey. as a meat vessel? No! Don't you ever talk about my daughter like that again! You understand you me? Can't. Goddamn psycho! They're not like you and me. They don't think, they don't feel it. They rip out everything pure. But I can still feel them. I didn't, uh, I didn't mean to hurt you. I'm gonna get you some help, okay? Can't you see? There is no such thing as hell. Are you mad at me? No, I'm not mad at you. Then why were you driving so fast? The faster I drive, sooner we get to Madison. Aren't we going to Poco Rio? Yeah. Poco Rio, that's what I meant. I have scars, John. I have scars. Don't move. You were in a bad place for a while, but you're all better now. He's away. He's away. They had to do away with him. Do away with him? They didn't like what made him tick. What made him tick, they had to lick. They liked you and me, our little family of three. Daddy, what did they put inside of me? Open your eyes, John. They're inside all of us.
slipped into a coma. That's why I'm, I'm here. My name's Peter Reiner. Um, I, I'm a friend of John's. John's dead. Why, God, why didn't he just buckle up? Oh, no, 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 John, John's not dead. No, no, he's, he's in a coma. Really? Yeah. Didn't the hospital tell you? Yes. True. And before that happened, he asked me to come over here and talk to you. You see, uh, I, uh, I, I make waffles for a living. So maybe I could help you. Well, do you do other stuff too? Because I backed up my toilet. Maybe you could fix it after you make waffles. You need to focus on yourself. We need to fix Christine. You're almost there. the best waffles and you make the best scrambled eggs you have something on your lip where breath right there oh. <coughs> <coughs> 
John, John, wait up. Hey, Come on. Peter, hey. how could you do this to me? Your lips were on my wife. Listen, okay, John, I was really just trying to help out at first, you know, trying to pay you back for the... And, and you know, not only were they on my wife, but you put them there when I was in a coma. I mean, don't you people have any sympathy? And what was that furry barking thing in there? Was it... Did you buy her a dog? Well... Yeah. Oh, yes, I did. God! I mean, this is what I get, this is what I get for saving your life? <laughs> now, hold on, John. You're the one who said it was only a nugget, huh? Remember? Her husband is supposed to buy your dog, Peter, not you. John. John! What's this? Looks like a kidnapping report. You didn't go after Simon? Pocorio PD has it. It's just a question of time. Well, I've got to get up there. What's this girl's story? You just came out of a coma. You're not going anywhere. Oh, listen, John, I'm so glad you're here. Listen, I talked to Christine, and I told her she has to take the dog back. It's really no big deal. She didn't like him that much anymore. Not now, Peter. What dog? There's a kidnapped girl here, Sergeant. Now, what's your story? I brought up Pekingese for Christine. It's Frank Cohen's goddaughter. How big is it? Oh, dear God. It's a Pekingese, you know. They're tiny. Are they sure it was Simon? They found Simon's prints all over the abduction scene. I've been looking for a cute little dog. Really? For my wife. Oh, yeah, right. Uh, well, she'll love this one. Uh, it's, it's tiny. Cute. Well, I'm gonna need all the paperwork on this one, all right? How much? Let's say 150. 120. 140. I should charge you with robbery. 130. Deal. Listen to me. I'm taking responsibility for what I've done. I'm going up to Poco Rio to set things straight. Now, two days from now, you're going to read in the headlines that super cop John Lesberg saves girl from kidnapping terror. And my wife's dog isn't for sale. John, I need your badge. What? Your gun. Robert, this job is all I have left. I want your desk cleaned up tomorrow. And if I find you within 50 feet of Simon Applewhite, I'll charge you with impeding an investigation and hindering apprehension. But, Robert... I've lost faith in you. It's over. snoring no I wasn't yes you were don't you think if I was snoring I would know I'm talking now and I know I'm talking you were asleep was I yes no oh. when am I going home your godfather's an alien kid you don't want to go home but my birthday's tomorrow he's having a party for me at the planetarium with other kids with all my friends it's not a birthday party, Lisa. It's an alien recruitment. He's not an alien! Yes, he is! How do you know? Well, I'm not gonna tell you. Tell me! You still can't handle it. Go back to sleep. Tell me or I'll scream! Siren. When I was about your age, your godfather surgically inserted a dozen alien probes throughout my back in order to harvest my flesh as an organic shell for extraterrestrial inhabitation. The only way to get rid of them before they activated was to rip them free with my bare hands. 
As a result, I lost three quarts of blood and due to nerve damage, control of my big toe. Look. Do you, Lisa Thrift, want to lose control of your big toe? No. Where's my sunglass? I don't know. We'll find them in the morning. Now go back to sleep and quit snoring. have a collect call from Magnum Pennington Albilla hit district these charges please press one Simon si Simon Simon how did you know it was me where are you A and then how did you get this number your business card I never gave you my business card did you lift my wallet? You wouldn't believe the temperature in Africa today. I'm talking. Whew. Hot. I saved your life, and you lifted my wallet. That's great. Do you think that's why Ethiopians are so skinny? The heat sort of melts them away. No, Simon. I think it's because they're starving. Now, did you really take that girl? Yes. I took her to set her free. I took her so he won't cut her. Will you help me? Will you give me Lisa Thrift? After I kill Frank Cohen. You can't go around killing people and kidnapping people. I can if he's not a human. There's nothing in the Constitution about aliens. Simon, what the is wrong with you? What is going on in the little head of yours? John. What? Have you seen them? No. Well, uh... Yeah. Maybe in a... Maybe in a dream or two. That's how it always starts. As a nightmare, and then it gets worse. Meet me at 3033 Fish Trap Drive outside of Poco Rio. Bad voodoo, John. Gives me the willies. Can you feel it? Ooh. No. Where's Lisa? Not now. New proof of an invasion. Listen.
Well, yeah. Weren't you listening? Ah. Oh, yeah. It mooed. Well, thank goodness somebody else heard it. I thought I was going crazy. You know, Simon, that's what cows do. Chickens go cluck and cows go moo. Knees. Oh, God. Moo, knees. He's trying to warn us, John. They're right here under your nose and Lulu's hoof. And it's a steer, not a cow. Dummy. I still had my gun. I'd shoot you right well, now. Well, you know, at least you'd be using it for something. You're looking down the barrel of a planetary invasion, and you've got your left shoe on your right foot. I lost my job because of you. You're a lousy detective anyway. Yeah, well, being a lousy detective is how I made my living. You know, I wish that for just one day I could live in this world of yours where you don't have to worry about losing your job or having your wife leave you for another man or having a daughter die on you. Wish I could be Simon Applewhite. I have a dead child, John. Yeah, I'm sure you do. I carry him inside of me, kind of like your wife does with her daughter. My daughter she killed. Her daughter she loved, John! That's why she carries her here, like me! You drag your dead daughter around like a ball of flame on a chain! That's why I hate you and love your wife. Yeah, well, that's fine. You love my wife all you want. It's your loss. Simon, I need that girl. I need her to get my job, my life back. Please, you owe me that. You owe me! I do not. Who do you think held your brain in your skull when you were bleeding on the railroad track? It was your fault that I got hurt in the first place. There's that ball and chin again, John. Oh, please. Here's the deal. You can sit there and cry about your life, you can ignore the things I've shown you, and you can keep blaming the love of your life for the fact that your daughter is dead. Or you can do something big, John. My steer and I are off to save the human race. Come on, Lulu. Up and at him. Here we go. Come on. Come on, Lulu. Saving Poco Rio. Come on. Humanity's waiting for us. Come on, Lulu. Saving Poco Rio. Come on. Fine. Stay here with John. I don't need either of you. See you at McDonald's. Wait, Simon, I'll help you. Why? Because I believe you. Well, can I have a ride? Because, ugh, mine is not going anywhere. Yeah. No. Where are your sunglasses? That situation is under control. Give me my glasses. No. Give them to me. 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 No. Fine. Hello, Officer Reiner speaking. Peter. John. John, where are you? I'm in uh, Poco Rio. Ugh, don't tell me you're with Simon. Listen, I want you to understand something. I'll never forgive you for what you did to me. Listen, John, it just kind of happened, okay? You know, I didn't mean to sleep with your wife. I didn't mean to. You moved in with my wife while I was in a coma. See, I, I, no, okay? But she, she was very stressed about the, you, you know, you put her in a horrible place, John. She put herself in a bad place, all right? All right, okay, look, John, can we just talk about this like two rational adults, please? Rational adults? You think you're rational? Listen, this is hard for me. You're the last person I want to call right now, but I need a favor and you owe me. I need someone with a badge, someone who can, can help me get my job back. Listen, I can't help you, John. Come on, they fire me. Listen to me! If it wasn't for me, you wouldn't have a job right now to get fired from. And for that matter, you wouldn't have my wife to get to sleep with either, okay? Now meet me at Hope Park in Poco Rio in an hour. Uh, all right, okay. Fine.
Who is that? Uh, uh, some guy trying to sell me something. They're calling pay phones now? Whew. What people won't do for a buck. My name's Lisa. Lisa Thrift. Hello, Lisa Thrift. What are you going to do with that? You're taking Lisa to India. I don't want to go to India. You'll like it there, Lisa. They've got lots of camels and very few morgons. But I want to go to my birthday party at the planetarium. You can celebrate with John. He's going with you to translate. What? Well, well, I'm, not, I'm not a translator. Pennington Abilahit. You know that you, you speak Hindi. No, I don't really speak Hindi. I have to go to the bathroom. You're gonna have to hold it, kid. Well, she can't hold it all the way to India. I want to pee at my birthday party. I'll tell you what. I saw a convenience store around the corner. I'll take her to go pee, and you get the... Uh, fine, the fine, okay. I will talk shop with the pilot without my sunglass. They're goggles. Everybody knows it. Where's the store? We're not going to the store. But I have to go pee. I know. I thought you wanted to pee at your birthday party. I do. Well, that's where we're going to go. I guess I can't argue with that. No, I guess you can't. I'm Detective John Lefsberg, and... I suppose you hear about the abduction? Actually, it's kind of a long story. I'm from Giddings, and, and I'm here... A yes or no will do. Yes. Abductions. Stealing through a window at night. Window of youth. Rape of innocence. They take and they change. I know abduction. Do you think my goddaughter's changed now that she's been abducted? Uh, that's why I'm here. I know why you're here! You found my goddaughter dead! Out of my reach forever! Taken by Simon Applewhite! Well, good afternoon! How would you like the ride of your life into the wild blue yonder? I'm looking for a safe passage to India. Well, we don't go quite that far. It's okay, I'm not one of them. 
See? I can look you in the eye. All right. I pioneered the technology that NASA used to send radio signals to the stars. I am the ambassador to the heavens! And yet for all my power, all my wealth, my own goddaughter's out of my reach. Buck, and Mr. Cohen, if it's a bad time. I... Yes, India, I-N-D-I-A. Uh, yeah, uh, I just don't think I have enough fuel. I know, hunting aliens is an important job, but so is saving a little girl from inhabitation. Lisa. I found her, but I have to take her to a debriefing before I'm allowed to release her to you. I was so worried. Did he hurt you? Simon? No, he didn't hurt me. I'm afraid we can't talk about that right now. I, I'd love to take you out, but you know what? I think I have an appointment for a... Oh, what do you know right now? So if you would, please, you just go? go away. Simon Applewhite, Giddings PD. You're under arrest. Where's my birthday party? I had to cancel. But I want to play with my friends at your planetarium. Well, now that you're back, I'd love to be the host of all your friends here among the stars. Anything you say can and will be held against you in a court of law. It's such a beautiful day. Just get the rest of them over there away from my balloon. Don't look him in the eye. All right, Simon, hands behind the back right now. Let's go. Come on. Think well, of it. You almost did without thinking. Hey, would you quit aggravating oh! me, please? Now you did it. How? You went and looked him in the eye. Oh! Shot one up for the Moonies! Where's Simon Applewhite? He's at Hope Park. But I'm sure he's already gone by now, right, Lisa? No. Oh! <laughs> that hurt. Oh, that hurt. Go! Get away from get me! Stay away from me! You are a madman! You are a madman! I get am a madman! I want Simon here. Hope Park. That's about five minutes away. Lisa, will you come here for just a second? I want him to feel what it's like to lose what I lost. I want his insides outside. Simon, hold it. <sighs> Nobody is going anywhere until John arrives with Frank Cohen. <clears throat> John's bringing Frank Cohen here? I want him here, in my place of solace, so I can deal with him with a clear head. It's his time to be Super Cup. <sighs> it's his turn to save the day. Lisa, I forgot to give you something. Bring me back, my child. Happy place. Uh, uh, oh, okay. Uh, A little happier. Uh, Wait up, Simon. Simon. Uh, oh, uh, God. Uh, I trusted you with the future of our species. Simon. Simon. Uh, uh, He's not under arrest. Right. You cut us together. I told you, Isn't John. That Frank I Cohen? Told you. Come on, come on. No! Lock us and lock us. There's no time, John! 
Wait here. I found the keys. No, no, no. Wait, wait, wait. I don't like keys. Peter, go get the keys. Go get the keys. Give me my goddaughter. Give me my goddaughter! If you've hurt her... Don't you remember Simon, Goddaddy? Don't you remember my uncle? Lewis. He doesn't like Lewis. He changed his name to Simon. Pretend you're far, far away, boy. <sighs> Pretend you're on the moon. Are you sure he's your Uncle Lewis? <sighs> Remember, boy, they always come in threes. Mommy showed me pictures of him before she died. She died. First the loss. <laughs> then the pain. Finally, the love. Always look me in the eye, boy. Always look me in the eye. It's all right. I'm getting speedy. I don't like what you put inside of me. Selleck looks like Magnum P.I. Uh, Liz. Liz is still stuck on the ground. 
Lisa's is still stuck on the ground. They always come in threes. First, the loss. Then, the pain. And finally, peace. Pálida, pálida luna azul que iluminas mi camino de sol litaria y mi alma sin rumbo fijo noche tras noche confundida de pensar tanto sin saber quién soy yo, de dónde vengo y a dónde voy. Pero estoy tan perdida, sin encontrar la vía. Sola que estoy, pregunto a ti, Pablo Montaomi. Ese es el camino que yo debo seguir Y si a oscuras yo me encuentro Me ilumina tu luz, Pablo
Sampai